Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Today, more than ever, I would like to thank our Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible. As you might have noticed, we have got a new technical upgrade that wouldn't have been possible without your continuous support. I've got a new webcam, so you can see me even more clearly now, and a brand new web pad that I can use to write a bunch of formulas. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this new type of videos on Nettle. Those would be mathematics tutorials, where I'll be covering some of the concepts behind mathematics, statistics, mathematical finance, that type of good stuff. And to start things off, I'll be covering uh, the derivative, which is a key concept in calculus. And today I'll be giving you an intuitive introduction to what the derivative is and how you can physically or geometrically explain what it is. And we will be covering it on a simple example that is generalizable later to more complicated example, which would be the quadratic function or x squared. So let's start by just considering the function y equals f of x equals x squared. And we can uh, treat this function as explaining something in the real world. So for example, let's assume that x is the number of seconds, the time that has passed since the uh, body has started moving, and uh, y is the distance that the body has transgressed. And uh, this is a function that is quite uh, heavily used when uh, describing a falling object. For example, when you uh, drop a ball off a cliff, uh, that is a function that would describe the distance the ball has traveled uh, as a function of time. And if we want to represent it graphically, we might want to draw the xy plane and consider a bunch of points. Well. Obviously, if x is equal to 0, then y is equal to 0, 0 squared is 0. So our graph of the function does pass through the 0, 0 point. If x is equal to 1, then, well, x squared is equal to 1 as well, so y would be equal to 1. So this is another point the graph should pass through. If x is equal to 2, then 2 squared is 2 times 2, meaning that our graph would pass through the 2, 4 point. And carefully denoting that over here, we can see that the graph should pass through that point. We can also say that it should pass through the 3, 9 point, but we're running out of space. So we can also consider some number between 0 and 1 to plot the graph even uh, better, with greater precision. So let's consider a half. So a half over here would result in y, the value of the function, being equal to a half squared, so a half times a half, or 1 over 2 times 2, meaning a quarter. So we will pass through a point 1 half, 1 quarter, over here. And if we carefully plot the chart, we'll get something like that, a parabola. And uh, basically, if there is an object that is moving, you are sometimes um, interested not only in the distance that the object has traveled, but also the speed with which it traveled. So, for example, we might be interested in asking the following question. What is the average speed of our object, of the ball thrown off a cliff, um, in the first two seconds of its movement? Or, uh, what was the average speed in the interval between the second and the fourth seconds? Of its movement. So basically, to answer this question, we obviously would need to consider what speed is. And speed is just distance over time, isn't it? That's the uh, velocity with which the object travels through space. And basically, if we want to consider the velocity from 2 until 4, we might want to consider what is going to be the value of our function, the distance traveled at point in time 4, minus the distance traveled at point 2, over 
the time that has passed between 4 and 2, meaning that it's basically 2 seconds that have passed, but let me just write it down as that, 4 minus 2. So basically what we've got here is uh, an equation that we can easily substitute our function to and uh, find the answer. So if we substitute f of 4 and f of 2, would have 4 squared minus 2 squared over 4 minus 2. 4 squared is 16, 2 squared is 4, and 4 minus 2 is 2, meaning that we've got 12 over 2, meaning that the average speed between points 2 and 4 is 6. And if we look at our graph plotted at a more wide range, so let's say that we are now having 1, 2, 3, 4, in terms of our x-axis, and around here we would have 16 in terms of our y-axis, so 4, 16 is a point, and also 2, 4 is a point, so he would have like 8, he would have 4, so 4 here would be a point, and now we draw the parabola, also, we would have a 1-1 one, one point over here, a 2-4 point. Basically, to represent our quest to calculate the average speed on the graph, we could have plotted a line, straight line, between the points 2-4 and 4-16 and calculated the slope of this line. And calculating the slope of this line is, again, involving uh, calculating the rise over run. And that's exactly what we have done here. This is our rise, the increase in the value of the function. And this is our run, the increase in the argument, or in the x variable. So basically here is where the physical uh, concept of speed corresponds to the geometric concept of the slope of a line that crosses two points on the graph. And as it crosses two points on the graph, it is called a second line. And we see that the slope of the second line we have just calculated and it's equal to 6. However, what would happen if we reduce the time that we are concerned with when calculating our average speed? What would happen if we would rather be concerned with average speed from 2 to 3? Well, then we would have to calculate f of 3 minus f of 2 over 3 minus 2. Physically, that's amount of distance traveled per time passed, and geometrically, it's rise of the value function over the run, or the change in the value of the argument. And here, as our f of x is x squared, we have got 3 squared minus 2 squared over 3 minus 2, and that would be equal to 9, 3 squared, minus 4, 2 squared, over 1, as it's 3 minus 2. And that would give us nothing else than 5. And if we want to approach it geometrically once again, we'll need to spot the 3, 9 point on the graph, so 3 over here and 9 somewhere over here, we've got this point already on the graph, so we don't have to worry. We need to plot the second line once again between those two points, and we can see that if we are concerned with one second, not two seconds, this second line is growing uh, suspiciously close to the shape of the graph around this uh, particular region, and that tells us something about the derivative already. But without getting too far ahead of ourselves, we'll be calculating the slope of the second line, rise over run, and the slope would be equal to 5. And we are, again, alarmingly close to investigating what it's all about. The concept of the derivative is akin to a concept of instantaneous or instant speed, or it would be a slope of a tangent line. Consider this. Consider our graph and different second lines. If we put a second line that is quite uh, far away in terms of the two points it connects and start moving this point 
closer and closer to the point of origin, would be approaching to a tangent line. And that would mean that the slope of the second line that's alarmingly close to the point where we started, and in our example that is 2 seconds, so if we are concerned not with 3 seconds but with like 2.5 seconds, 2.4, 2.3, 2.1, and so on, we would be approaching closer and closer to the slope of the tangent line. And if we're concerned with speed, then the more and more we reduce the increment of time we're concerned with, the closer and closer our measure of uh, average speed would approach to the measure of instant speed. And this is how instant speed and tangent are related to the concept of the derivative. And now we can formally write the formula for the derivative. So the derivative, which can be uh, denoted in a bunch of ways, it can be denoted dy over dx, so the derivative of y with respect to x, or it can be referred to as y dash, or it can be referred to f dash of x, dash means the derivative. Regardless of how you denote it, the formula is that it is a limit of the increment tending to zero of rise over run, of the change in the value of the function, the distance passed, or the rise of your uh, second, so f of x plus delta x minus f of x, so that would be the run or the distance passed in delta x seconds, and in the denominator we would have the run, so x plus delta x minus x. And we can simplify that because here x cancels out, so we have got just delta x in the denominator. And this is formally a definition of derivative. What is well, crucial to understand about it is that we can calculate the derivative of our function at any point and even generally as a function with respect to x. As if we do not specify what x is, we still can define the derivative of x squared, for example, or even more complicated functions with respect to x as well. So a derivative of a function is another function, if we do not specify the point. Let's first uh, consider the x squared example and uh, do the calculations, keeping in mind that f is x squared. The derivative would be the limit, with delta x tending to zero, of x plus delta x squared minus x squared. And in the denominator we would have delta x. And if we open the parentheses over here, what we would get is, as per the formula, the first uh, additive squared, so x squared, plus 2 times the product, so 2x delta x, plus the second component squared, delta x squared. And then we subtract x squared. And then we divide everything by delta x in the denominator. We cancel x squared out, as we've got it with a plus and a minus sign. And now we can actually bring delta x in front of what's left, as we've got delta x over here and delta x over here. And we will get delta x in front, and in the parentheses, what's left remaining is 2x plus delta x. And we also got delta x in the denominator, that we can cancel out by dividing both the numerator and the denominator by delta x. And we are left with the limit of delta x tending to 0 for 2x plus delta x. And as delta x is tending to 0, this can be reduced to 0, and we are left with 2x, meaning that the derivative of x squared as a function generally at any point x is 2x, meaning that f dash of x or y dash or 
dy over dx is equal to 2x. And that means, in particular, to are concerned with f dash of 2, that's instant speed at t equals 2, or the slope of the tangent line at point x equals 2, would be 2 times 2, 2x, and it will be equal to 4. And that is what our calculations were approaching long, long ago without us even knowing. The slope of the second as we were approaching uh, 2, as we were reducing the time increment we were concerned with, or the uh, argument increment we were concerned with, was approaching 4. It was decreasing from 6 to 5, and then it would have decreased even further if we considered smaller and smaller increments, as well as the uh, instant speed would have been going further and further down to 4 if it's evaluated at a single point. And that is how you can build connections and understand intuitively the concepts behind derivative with formal proof and with some neat illustrations. I'm really looking forward to your feedback under this video. Let me know what can be improved and what other topics can I cover in the similar format. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.